thanks to the organizers for uh, inviting me. It's always nice to be back in Lumini. So I won't even try to argue that uh, this talk fits in the topic of the conference. I mean, it doesn't. <laughs> but I still hope that it will uh, be interesting for uh, some of you. So the title is A Measure of Maximum Entropy for finite horizon <coughs> sinai billiard flows. So that's a new, new thing. And so the new main result is joint uh, with uh, Jérôme Caron, who will present a poster uh, tomorrow about part of uh, what I will uh, uh, mention. And uh, Mark Demers, who I think is one of the organizers, but he's not here, but he's paying for the bouillabaisse or something. I mean, he's paying for something, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> Hi, Mark, if you're watching this recording. Uh, OK, so uh, what is a Sinai Billiard? So one thing which is missing from the title is that it's a two-dimensional. OK, so what is a Sinai Billiard? So uh, the billiard table is a two-torus from which you remove a finite union of uh, obstacles. So maybe I should start with drawing a picture. So for example, this would be a, an example satisfying all my assumptions. So the OJs, OJs are closed, pairwise disjoint. And they have smooth enough uh, uh, boundaries, which means uh, C3, or C2 plus epsilon is, uh, is enough. And each of these boundaries has strictly positive curvature. So the curvature is bounded by, well, K min, which is strictly positive, and since we are Assuming C3, it's also bounded from above by some finite uh, number. And the last assumption which I want to make, uh, well, it's not the last, actually. There will be more technical assumptions later. But the last assumption, which is in the title, is a finite horizon. And I mean finite horizon in a slightly uh, stronger sense than usual. So assume there is no orbit making only grazing collisions. And I realize I didn't tell you what the orbits are, but in any case, I, I guess most of you know already, but let's do it anyways. So what is the dynamics? You have a single particle, and it's moving in straight lines on this billiard table Q. So this is a billiard table. And whenever it meets one of these uh, uh, obstacles, which are also called scatterers or repellers, there is a specular uh, reflection. So the incoming and outgoing angles are the same. And I'm lucky because here I have a grazing collision. So that's a grazing collision. OK, so the dynamics is a single particle So one particle, straight lines uh, let's say unit speed, unit speed, constant speed, only the direction changes uh, on Q, specular reflections on the boundary. 
And a grazing collision is a collision where you are grazing an obstacle. So maybe I should introduce some coordinates. I won't write many formulas, but I will introduce some coordinates just to state a few more uh, facts or define a few uh, objects. So the coordinates I want to use are the following. Uh, coordinates. So there will be two coordinates. It's a two-dimensional. Ah, no, I forgot to say something. You can either view this as a, a flow or as a map. So maybe I should say this. No, let me write for the coordinates, and then I will tell you that. So the first coordinate is a position. If you think of the map, the position on the on the boundary, and this is like uh, arc length. It is arc length. So it's between zero and the total length of, uh, of gamma. And the second, second coordinate is the angle. And the convention, which is usually used, is that it's post, the post-collision angle with the normal of the obstacle. OK? So, um, so then you have a two-dimensional space, which is compact, which is gamma times minus pi over 2, pi over 2. So this is compact. It has boundaries. Right? It's a, like it's just a union of finitely many cylinders. That's M. And what are these boundaries? Well, they are exactly the grazing collisions. So the union of the grazing collisions is actually the set of singularities. This is a singular set. So it's a set of points in M such that phi is equal to plus or minus phi over 2. OK? And I said it, but I didn't write it. It's a grazing. And there's a synonym, which is tangential. Collisions. OK? And since we're doing dynamics, we have to have an invariant set. So we have to iterate this set. And so I call Sn the union of t minus i of S0. I call 0 to n for n in z. And if I take all the Sn's, then it's a countable set of uh, curves, but it is dense. Okay, so you have these grazing collisions, you have these uh, singul singularities all over the place. So this was just notation, and now uh, I can write what I said, I think, briefly before. There are, there, is, there are two different ways of looking at the billiard, as a map or as a flow. So as a map, it's a map on, on M, a map from collision to, to collision, OK? And then if you look at this map, you also have the first return time, which is a important function in this uh, business, the return time, which you can also call the ceiling time or the first collision time, OK? And the assumptions which we make guarantee that it is bounded from below because uh, the obstacles are pairwise disjoint. And it's bounded from above because of the finite horizon assumption. If there are no grazing, uh, the, the situation where you have grazing collisions would be like the limiting case like this, right? This would be a case where you have an obstacle, sorry, an orbit making only grazing collisions. So if this is not allowed, then you will have finite horizon, which sometimes is just uh, defined to be the, the fact that tau max is bounded from above. So this is a map. So this map is not continuous because of the singularities. Okay. However, it is piecewise C2. 
but the, der the first derivative blows up at some of the uh, boundaries. So these are the bad news. I mean, the fact that it's not very smooth because of the singularities. However, it is hyperbolic, so this is good news, hyperbolic. And how do you define hyperbolicity? Using invariant cones. You have strictly invariant cones forward and, and uh, back backwards. And the cones are very nice. I mean, the cone fields are very nice. They're actually uh, uh, constant everywhere. However, the stable and unstable manifolds are only measurable. Sorry, the stable and unstable foliations are only measurable. And a, ni a last thing I want to say, I'm not sure I will use it much, but uh, I want to introduce a notation for the hyperbolicity. It's known that the expansion and the contraction are uniform, uniformly bounded from below or above, and the uh, hyperbolicity uh, and the bound for this hyperbolicity is given by this magic number lambda. So you see that this tau min and uh, kappa min and kappa max and so on, they appear naturally in the, in the business. So this is a map, but actually, as the title indicates, tomorrow I'm going to talk uh, mostly about the flow. At least the main result is going to be about, about the flow. And so what is a, what is a flow? So the flow is just you take a point anywhere on the billiard table and then you flow along the, the definition I, I said. So it's defined on a few times the circle because now the angle can go in any direction. You can go in the future or in the past. This is a continuous map if you indeed identify incoming and outgoing angle at the co collision. It's piecewise C2. And it's hyperbolic in the sense of flow hyperbolicity, meaning that, of course, in the time direction, you don't have hyperbolicity. And the main result today will be about the flow. However, we will view, to prove it, we will actually view the flow as a suspension of the map under the return time. So I, I probably I won't have time to say much about the proof, but uh, this is uh, the, like the starting point of the proof. OK, so uh, I, my talk doesn't fit in the conference, but there is uh, some probability in it. So um, what is a, the connection with probability? That these uh, dynamical systems have many invariant probability measures. And the one which has been studied most is a uh, smooth probability invariant measure. Which uh, can be called uh, SRB in this case. And it has been, I mean, we know uh, really a lot of things about it. So it's Bernoulli. It's exponential mixing for, for, for holder of servos. Uh, it has many, many properties, bo both for the map and for the, and for the, and for the flow. OK? So I'm not going to say uh, anything about this uh, SRB measure. I'm just going to remind you that one way to prove it, one uh, way to study it, is via transfer operators. Acting on an anisotropic spaces. And the relevant uh, transfer operator for the map 
is defined like this. And last time, uh, one of the last times I gave a talk on this, I, I was calling my observables phi. But then Livio Flaminio complaining that there's already phi in this story, so I will try to, <laughs> I'll try to use psi. So this is a transfer operator. So you compose uh, with a map in the path, and you divide by the Jacob. Okay, so this operator, by definition, has a property that it's uh, dual preserves the bag measure. Since I divide by the Jacobian here. And then you can prove, if you, if you introduce a suitable space of uh, anisotropic distribution, you can prove that this fixed point is actually a simple eigenvalue and that uh, outside of a disk of radius just strictly smaller than one, the, the spectrum consists of isolated eigenvalues of finite multiplicity, which uh, none of which is on a unit circle, I mean, besides the simple eigenvalue one. And there are even examples due to Damien, who I think is here, showing that you can really have this, some non-trivial eigenvalues uh, uh, for the SRB measure. Okay, I'm not going to say more about this uh, SRB measure, because as I said, I want to, no, it's not possible. I want to talk today about another measure. Which is a measure of maximum entropy. So now it's in fashion to study measure of maximum entropy for the billiard and other systems. Uh, again. So maybe I, I uh, so, so for the measure of maximum entropy. Uh, what is it? Well, I guess everybody knows here, but it's a, it's a measure of maximum entropy is a measure, a measure of u, an invariant probability measure such that, uh, maybe I call it mu star, such that mu star, the, the Kolmogorov entropy of mu star realizes the soup of the Kolmogorov entropy over all ergodic invariant probability measures for, let's say, for, for the map. Let's, let's discuss this. Discuss it for the map first. And so maybe first I will remind you what is the result for maps, which I think I talked about three years ago, last time I was in Lumini in, in this uh, room. So uh, let me just remind you what the result is. So that's an old result, I mean, from more than three years ago. So and, and to, to construct the measure of maximum entropy, you need an additional condition, OK? And to, to state this additional condition, I need some notation. So to, to formulate this additional condition, first I need a candidate for uh, this supremum, which, uh, as you know, in many cases, is topological entropy. So I need a candidate for the topological entropy. Let me just write it. Topological entropy of T. And how do you define this candidate? You define a partition Mn for every n, a partition Mn, which is a partition, well, there are many ways to, to several ways to say it. Either you say it's a maximal domains of continuity of Tn, okay, uh, which is the same as taking M, uh, removing the uh, level N singularity set, and looking at the maximal connected components. And so the candidate for the topological entropy is the following thing. You look at the cardinality of Mn, you take the log, you divide by n, and you take the limb soup, which actually is a limit, but that's... Okay? 
So that's just a definition. And uh, now what is uh, the result? I'm puzzled because I don't find my... Uh, Well, I remember the statement, but I'm a bit puzzled. Ah, oh, no, here it is. So what is a condition? So we call it sparse recurrence singularities. And actually, I will need one more definition to state it, because the condition is expressed like this. And I have to tell you what is a 0. S0 is a number between 0 and 1, defined as follows. It's quantified how often you come back to the, the frequency of your return to the uh, singular set. So you fix, you fix an angle very close to pi over 2, strictly smaller than pi over 2, but very close to pi over 2. And you fix a very large integer. N0. And then S0, phi 0, N0 is defined to be the infimum of the real numbers in zero, between 0 and 1, such that any orbit of length exactly N0 has at most S0, N0 collisions with angle at least phi 0. So phi uh, very close to grazing uh, uh, de de define, uh, as defined by phi 0. OK, so this is, sorry? Uh, uh, yes, yes, thank you, thank you, yes, thank you, absolutely, yes. So this is the first condition, technical condition, which appears in this talk. So I call it star. OK. And so you might uh, worry about this condition. So let me discuss it a little bit. So first remark. So the fact that, the fact that tau max is uh, strictly infinite is a fact that guarantees that S0 is strictly smaller than 1. OK. Now, if you assume that there are no triple tangencies, then S0 is smaller than 2 thirds. OK? Another nice fact is that there are no examples known, examples known when condition star fails, I, I, except if somebody in the audience knows an example. I, I don't know any. Okay, and the last fact is that actually, okay, and many examples where it's, it holds, okay. Examples where it holds. Okay, and then there's some additional information in that this condition is very probably generic. Uh, maybe Peter, or maybe Peter has a scoop that actually it has been proved, where, where is Peter? Here, you didn't prove, write your paper yet. But it's you and him, no? Well, it's his proof. But you didn't write it up. It's not written up. It's not written up. OK, so I would say that's a conjecture. <coughs> so uh, there is a conjecture by Peter and Moji, which that this uh, S0 is actually generically very small, uh, as small as you want. Let me state this precisely. So there is something which is important in, in the billiard story. It's called complexity. OK, what is complexity? So for each integer, you define, k, you define kn, k of n, to be the maximal number of singularity curves uh, of Sn at a, a single point. OK, let me write it. Sup x in m, number of singularity of curves 
in Sn at x. Okay? So there's a very important fact. I don't know, uh, it's called a lemma, but maybe it's a theorem. I don't know, lemma. Yes? If you have a cross, uh, well, I think I would say two if it's two different curves, but if it's uh, three, I know, it can be anything between two and three. Uh, four, sorry, two and four. <laughs> three <halves. laughs> So <laughs> you're trying to confuse me. Uh, I mean, curves, is, is, it's an element of SN. Uh, you understood my answer, yes, yes. Okay, so now there's an important lever. So I cannot read what I wrote, and I don't remember who is the second author. I think it's Sinai. So I think it's William Morris Sinai. And what they proved, as many of you know, that this grows at most linearly. So there exists some k0 such that k of n is bounded by k0 times n for all n. Okay, now is a conjecture. Conjecture. So last time I gave this talk was in uh, Bristol, so everybody laughed <laughs> because there was somebody called Balint Tot, <laughs> and uh, I had to explain that this is not okay. So uh, the conjecture of uh, Peter and Moji is that for typical for typical uh, billiard table Q, uh, sorry, finite horizon maybe it's important horizon configuration Q, actually this is uniformly bounded. There is some K0 twiddle such that K of N is bounded by K0 twiddle for all N. And typical, I think, is in any reasonable sense. So either countable intersection of open and dense, or if you have an algebraic uh, billiard, so defined by uh, algebraic uh, by polynomial or something like that, it's in sense of a uh, lower dimensional spaces. And what is the connection with, uh, with S0? The connection is that uh, uh, Mark Demers and Alexei Korepanov recently proved, so it's like a, a, not their main result, but it's a, a paper which I will mention later if I have the time, but they, they observed Uh, that if the conjecture hold, well, let's, let me write it like this. If sup kn is finite, then for any epsilon positive, you can make s, s arbitrarily small. So in other words, this condition star, conjecturally, is, is always satisfied. I mean, generically satisfied. OK, and finally, I can say the result for the, for the map. Which many of you have already heard me talk about. And that was a joint work with uh, uh, Mark uh, Demers. So, uh, here I'm A. So this is with Mark. So it appeared in 2020, I think. So I assume, so it's for the map T, not for the flow. We assume, oh well, as I said before, finite horizon. And we assume this uh, sparse recurrence to singularities, OK? Uh, then the map admits a unique measure of maximal entropy. Uh, mu star. We have the Kolmogorov entropy of mu star is equal to this candidate for the topological entropy. 
And in addition, we have several nice properties. Uh, this measure mu star is Bernoulli, which implies that it's um, mixing, which implies that it's ergodic. And it charges all non-empty open sets. So that's the first nice uh, property. Second nice property, mu is adapted. What does this mean? It means that if you average the logarithm of the distance to the singularity set, either plus or minus one, doesn't matter, then you get a finite number. And this is a very uh, important property of uh, uh, invariant measures in the setting of uh, systems with uh, singularities. And let me just measure, mention two, two more properties or no, I, I, I think I will skip it. Uh, there are other plus other nice things. Do you want to keep on trying on some moments of this distance? Uh, so the way we prove this is by proving that the measure of uh, epsilon neighborhood of the singularity sets is uh, controlled by some power. And so I guess we could get some moments. I never try to, to figure out what, uh, what is the best you can see. But yes, yeah, the, the, the way we prove this is by controlling the measure of the neighbor, epsilon neighborhood of the singularity sets. Um, OK, so there are other nice things. However, we don't, we, don't, uh, we don't get exponential decay of correlations. OK? I will say just a little bit more about this. Uh, uh, re result for the map, and then I will move to the new result. So what do I want to say? I want to say, tell you what is the transfer operator which appears in this, in this uh, story. It's not the same, of, of course, as the one for the, for the SRB measure. Well, I say of course, but I didn't tell you that one of the other nice things is that this measure mu star is equal to the SRB measure only if all the periodic orbits uh, have the same multiplier. And we believe that this never happens, but I think it's not proved yet. So the mu star, we believe, is never equal to mu SRB. So, but the transfer operators, in any case, are very different. Because instead of having the full Jacobian here, you should have just, uh, you divide just by the stable Jacobian. And the stable Jacobian, behaves like the cosine, cosine of this angle phi. And so uh, in particular, it vanishes uh, at the grazing trajectory. So this is a very nasty uh, weight. OK, you divide by 0, which is not very nice. And because of that, you have all sorts of technical problems. And uh, we cannot get a spectral gap. We can get enough information that we can construct a measure, but we cannot get a, uh, a spectral gap. And we cannot prove exponential decay of correlations for uh, Holder observables. And um, well, since I have Corepanov co co here, maybe I can mention the main result of the paper, which is uh, which contains this uh, proposition. Uh, there is a result about uh, an upper bound on the decay of correlations, uh, which is by Mark and Alexei. So this I forgot to put the date. It's a archive preprint this year. So you take a finite horizon billiard uh, uh, map, Sinai billiard map, and you make a slightly wimpish, uh, more wimpish assumption here, which is that uh, instead of having bigger than uh, S0 log 2, you have S0 log 4. OK, but that's not a big deal. You just need a little bit more. Then you get some polynomial upper bound. 
let me try to state it correctly. I mean, uh, Alexei can complain if it's wrong. For any epsilon, for any alpha, there is a constant depending on uh, alpha and epsilon, finite, such that for any uh, psi 1, psi 2, which are alpha holder, if I look at the correlation uh, function for psi 1 and psi 2, for this measure of maximum entropy mu star, Well, it decays like a polynomial, so I have this prefactor. I have the C alpha norm of psi 1 and psi 2. And then I hope it's a correct formula. I get 1 over n to the h star divided by s0 log 2 plus 2 plus epsilon. Okay, and if I wrote it correctly, ah, oh, no, 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 wait, 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 maybe it's minus two. Ah, uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, this must be a minus. And so this is probably a minus two, okay. But in any case, it should be, it should make sense uh, uh, if this condition is satisfied and if S0 goes to zero, which believe, we believe is the case generically, we can make S0 arbitrary small generically. This should, should mean that you have super polynomial decay. Okay, if S0 is arbitrary small, you have actually super polynomial decay. And uh, proof of, um, of this result uses this anisotropic space business and the proof of that result uses symbolic dynamics. It's a very, a very cute uh, symbolic dynamic uh, model, very uh, new. But it must also use some of the information which is from the previous paper. Is yes? Or symbolic dynamics? Sorry? Towers or really symbolic dynamics? It's a, it's a, I mean, it is a tower. I mean, ask Alexei, he should be here. I, I would say it's a, I mean, they don't go into enough detail that you can really see the tower, but I think it's a tower. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, it's not symbolic dynamics in the sense of uh, Markov. No, no, it's not Markov. Yeah, so it's a tower. It's a tower, I guess. That's what you want to know. Okay, and now finally the new result for today. So, uh, so we'll not have the time to say much about the proof, but uh, you can go and ask questions to Jerome. Uh, tomorrow at his poster, if you want to have more information. Because now we will have the lunch, right? So we cannot right. go over time. <laughs> but I think I, I have the time to, not only to state the result, but to say just a few words about the proof. Okay, so what is the result? So this is theorem C. Oops. So this is a joint work with Jerome and Mark, which was posted on the archive last month, I think, or in the uh, end of August. So we assume finite, so it's a for the flow, right? For the flow. So we assume finite horizon. And we assume uh, another condition, which I didn't state yet, but I'm going to state now. I call it start star. So the new condition is that the topological entropy of the flow, which is well defined because the flow is uh, continuous, times the minimum uh, collision time is bigger than S0 log 2. Okay? 
Then the billiard flow has a unique measure of maximum entropy, which I would call new star. And in addition, in addition, new star is Bernoulli. and charges all non-empty open sets. And V is flow adapted. I want to um, I won't write the formula, but it's basically the same thing as we adapted for the, for the map. About the rate of uh, mixing, uh, we don't know. But last time I had a mass discussion with Alexei, he thought that maybe some of the ideas in the paper for, for the map could be used and give polynomial upper bounds. But I don't know anything about that latest status of this. So as far as I know, we don't know anything about the rate of mix. So maybe I should discuss a little bit this condition, uh, this new condition here. So uh, as you noticed, I mean, if the conjecture is true, the conjecture there is true, uh, maybe I should call this conjecture, uh, I don't know. Conjecture zero, conjecture infinite, I don't know. If conjecture zero is true, conjecture zero is true, then the condition star star is generic. Okay? And the other remark is that there are examples, examples satisfying condition start to start. OK, so now let me tell you just a few words about the proof. Is there an example that can also describe? Uh, probably, but I don't really know. Maybe Jerome knows. I mean, the problem is that it's, uh, you cannot really get the exact value of this number. You can get bound for this number. So I think you can find example. I think you can find examples where it's not satisfied for some bound for this, but since the bound is maybe not sharp, it doesn't. So I, I don't. I'm not sure. You can ask. He made a lot of numeric numeric, so you can ask Joe. Um, but in any case, if you want to look for an example, I mean, if, since we believe the conjecture is true, right? <laughs> I mean, we all believe the conjecture is true. So I mean, the examples would need to have lots of grazing collisions and to be very special and. Uh, but yeah, maybe that's a way to look for examples which don't satisfy it. I don't know. Um, OK, so let me tell you a few words about the proof. So as I said, we want to, in the beginning, we view phi t as a suspension of t under tau. And then we are going to use the Abramov formula. which says that a measure, if you have a measure for the map, and you multiply by Lebesgue, and you normalize by the average of the return time, you get an uh, invariant measure for the flow, OK? Uh, and what the formula says, actually, is that you can compute the entropy of the flow invariant measure. Uh, Maybe, maybe, let me write maybe phi here, phi t. If you have the entropy for the map invariant measure, uh, and you normalize, OK? So that, that, that is somehow the starting point. Uh, like this, no. OK, and then, um, actually, the 
The bulk of the work was done by Jérôme Caron in a separate paper. So there's, a, there's another paper in this business and a paper with uh, uh, three authors Uh, so, Caron, Demers, and myself is actually bootstrapping on this uh, longer and uh, more technical uh, paper. So, um, So the paper with, uh, with Jérôme and Marc is a rather short paper. It's about 15 pages long. And the reason it is so short is because it uh, bootstraps on a paper by Jérôme, which is also uh, on the archive. Okay, and so what does Jérôme do? And now I'm going to describe a little bit his paper. So what does he do? He looks at a family of potentials, and maybe I, could, I could call this a topological pressure for this family of potential. It's not the geometric family, but it's the family corresponding to multiplying the return time by a real number. Okay? So you define this, uh, this number. So P0 is just the topological entropy of the map. Okay? And if you have a measure which, uh, which realizes this uh, supremum, then it's an equilibrium measure for the potential t tau, or minus t tau. So mu realizes max. It's called an equilibrium measure for t and minus t. Sorry, too many tau, right? OK, so what uh, Jérôme did, is the following first there is a, like an easy proposition, uh, which is this pressure vanishes at the topological entropy of the flow, and that's a unique T where it, uh, unique positive T where it vanishes, and uh, so that the equilibrium measures for minus h top of the flow, the set of these equilibrium measures, if, if it's non-empty, is in bijection with a set of MME for the flow. This is basically uh, Abramov formula. Okay? And then comes the hard part. So what Jerome proved is that the conclusion of theorem C holds if a star star holds. Did I remember to call it star? Yes, star star holds. Holds. And in addition, lambda or log lambda is bigger than topological entropy of the flow of the time one map times tau max minus tau min. <coughs> so that's what he proved. And unfortunately, we could not find an example satisfying this condition. However, if you look at this proof to the, what saved us is that if you look at the proof, needs a weaker assumption, which we call the small singular pressure. 
And I was hoping to tell you what it was, but uh, you will be spared the statement. It's very ugly to write. And so, so actually, the result, which is in the paper of Caron, uh, you can state it like this, and you can also state it assuming this very ugly condition. And what we did in a, in a paper with uh, Jerome and Mark is that we showed that this uh, ugly condition was actually satisfied. And to do that, what we, we did is that we uh, exploited some ideas in another paper that I wrote with Mark, which is about equilibrium states for the geometric potential, so minus t unstable Jacobian. We have another paper with Mark where we study that. And in that paper, we had a little difficulty to go across the value t equals zero. So the value t equals zero is the value where the, the pressure is zero. Did I say zero? No, I mean one. The value uh, t equals one, t equals one, is a value where the pressure is equal to zero. And we had to jump over this value. We had, we, we, there was a like, it, I, basically it's a Holder inequality, right? We had to use a Holder inequality like to leapfrog over the, the value t equals one. And here we're able to do, to use the same trick. But I, I think I have to stop now. Thank you. <laughs>